Hi everyone, welcome to Watch It Played. My name is Rodney Smith. In this video, we're going to learn the one to seven player game Samurai Spirit, designed by Antoine Bauza and published by FunForge and Passport Game Studios. Honor, loyalty, justice, these are just some of the codes followed by a true samurai. And that's why you've heeded the call of a village being harassed by intruders that want nothing more than to burn it to the ground. You're outnumbered, but not necessarily outmatched. So gather your fellow warriors and your courage, and let's learn how to play. First, place the village board in the center of the table with the six farmstead tokens building side up on the indicated spaces, along with the three family tokens doll side up. In this example, I'm going to set up as if there were three players, but there's also four levels of difficulty. Easy, normal, hard, and heroic. And I'm going to set this up as if we were playing a normal game. Later in the video, I'll talk quickly about the other levels of play. Place a number of barricades equal to the number of players plus two around the outside of the village. Their exact location doesn't matter. Then return any unused barricades back to the box. These are the plunderer cards, marked with numbers 1 through 6. Set aside the 5s and 6s into their own separate, shuffled, face-down decks. Shuffle the remaining cards that are valued 1 through 4, and then deal out a number of them equal to the number of players multiplied by 7. So in this 3-player game, we're going to deal out 21 cards. Place the dealt pile here, and then return all of the other plunderers, valued 1 to 4, to the box without looking at them. Now each player chooses or is given a random samurai board, returning the rest to the box. Be sure they start with the animal sides face down, and then place the samurai meeple on the zero position of the battle track. Also collect their matching support symbol and put that nearby as well. Place the wound tokens nearby and then give a random player the active player marker. And that's the setup. The game is played over three rounds and in each round you have to make your way through this deck of plunderers. But between rounds you add in some of these more difficult and challenging plunderers to the mix. If one of the samurai dies or if all of the farmsteads or families are destroyed, the samurai lose the game, otherwise they win. During a round, players will take turns, and your turn starts by applying the battle penalty. Penalties are found here, and come from the plunderers that you've confronted. Of course, at the beginning of the game, you haven't confronted any yet. So we're going to skip this step for now, and then come back to it once we've explained some of the other rules. Now you must take an action, either to fight, support, or pass. We'll take a look at each of these. If you choose to fight, you first draw the top card of the plunderer deck, examine the raider you found there, and then either confront or defend against it. Confronting places a raider on the right side of your board and defending puts it on the left. You always have the option to confront a raider, and this area is known as the combat line. Once placed here, you then move your Samurai Meeple to match the total value of your Raider cards, which are shown here. So on a later turn, if you fight and confront again, you place the new Raider so that it overlaps the old one, but so that you can still see the number values of the previous Raiders. Now the Samurai should be moved here, matching the total value of your combat line. As you add more raiders, and sometimes even remove them, always immediately adjust and update the total value of your combat line. You'll notice the highlighted number 10, which is known as this samurai's ki. Each samurai has their own value like this. If your marker is still less than that value, nothing further happens. But should you go over that value, the raiders have overcome you and you place your meeple on this fire symbol. This means that you must remove a barricade from the village. Where the barricade was located makes no difference. It's the number of barricades that ensures the safety of the villagers. 
If confronting a raider causes you to land exactly on your Kiai value, you may choose to activate this unique special ability of your samurai. In this case, it allows you to add a barricade back to the village. But keep in mind, you can never have more than the amount of barricades you started the game with. Whether or not you use your Kiai ability, you now also remove the top card from the combat line and readjust your samurai on the battle track. This means with careful card play, you may be able to reactivate your Kiai again later in the game. So when you confront a raider, you place it on the right side of your board and adjust your samurai token accordingly. But as I said, you can also choose to defend against a raider that you've drawn, placing it on the left side of your board. Now when you do this, it's not going to go in your combat line, and that means you will not adjust the value on the battle track. But there are some restrictions to defending. Let's take a look. First, you can only defend against a raider, which has a symbol in the top right hand corner that matches one of these symbols here, either a hat, farm, or a doll. The dolls represent the families. If there is a match, you place the raider so it's right beside it, like so. This raider, for example, has no symbol here, so we would not be able to choose to defend against it. Instead, it would have to go in our combat line. When you defend against a raider with a different symbol, be sure to stagger how they're laid out so that you can still see which symbols have been matched. This is important because you can only have one of each type of symbol on this side of your board. So if I draw another raider and it has a symbol that I've already matched, like this doll, then again, I cannot choose to defend against it. I will have to confront it, which will again adjust my battle track. Both sides of your samurai are important. The combat line lets you build up to your ki, but you don't want to exceed this value. This means that sometimes you'll definitely want to defend placing cards over here. But additionally, at the end of each round, for each player who has not placed a matching card beside each of these symbols, there will be penalties. Knowing when to confront and when to defend is key to the survival of the samurai as well as the village. Before we move on, remember I said that at the beginning of your turn, before you choose whether to fight, support, or pass, you must apply any battle penalty. These are found on the bottom most card in your combat line in the bottom left hand corner. You always resolve this symbol at the start of your turn. It is possible not to have any symbol there at all, as you can see on this particular raider. In that case, you don't have to apply a penalty. Also, you never apply penalties from any raiders that you defended against. Penalties only apply that are found on the bottom most card in your combat line. So over the course of the game, you'll be covering up and potentially revealing new penalties that you have to deal with in future rounds. We'll go over all the various penalty symbols at the end of the video. Instead of fighting and drawing a raider from the plunderer deck, you have the option to support. And you do this by handing your support token to the player of your choice. And then, without looking, you move the topmost card from the raider deck into this area which will be known as the intruder stack. These tokens are only used for the support action to be able to pass them as a reminder that the samurai now has new abilities to use during their turn. Because you always have the ability that's shown here on your player board. For example, the player controlling this samurai always has access to this special ability that says after choosing and resolving a fight action, you can choose a second fight action. However, this player was also given a support token by another samurai on their turn. And that means they'll also be able to use this ability as well. For example, this ability means that when you draw a card from the top of the raider deck, you have the option of immediately putting it on the bottom of that deck. Then you must draw a second card which you will have to either confront or defend. Paired with this ability, it means that each time they do a fight, they'll have the option of returning that first card to the bottom of the deck. Whether or not a samurai used a support token they were given, they must return it at the end of their turn. It's even possible for a player to receive multiple support tokens from several players, and they'll be able to use all of them during their turn. 
If you choose not to fight or support, then you must pass. And there's a few reasons you might do this. For example, you may have already completely filled up the left side of your board. And on your combat line, you know that if you add in more raiders, you're likely to exceed your Kiai value and burn down a barricade. This is a good situation where you might want to pass, and you do this by laying down your meeple. For the remainder of the round, it's almost as if you don't exist. You don't suffer from penalties in your battle line, and you can't be targeted by effects, and you can't give or receive cards. Now, if at the start of your turn, you were already past your Kiai, then you must resolve the battle penalty as normal, and for your action, you must pass, laying your meeple down. After taking an action, the next player, in clockwise order, resolves their battle penalty, and then they take an action. And so it goes around the table, turn after turn. Now there is an active player marker you can give to the player currently taking their turn. In the games I've played, I haven't found I've needed this as a reminder, but it's there if you want to use it. Now a round will end either once the last raider card has been drawn from this deck and resolved, or once all the samurai have passed. If they've all passed, any cards remaining in the raider deck are then placed on top of the intruder stack. Now each player checks the left side of their board, starting at the top. Each player that did not match a raider to the hat symbol places a wound token on their samurai. Each player that did not match a farm symbol now removes a farm token from the board. And finally, each samurai that does not have a doll symbol matched removes a random family token. Now the villagers come to your aid. Flip over the family tokens that remain in the village and then receive the benefits that they show. This villager lets you put back a barricade that was previously destroyed. That does not mean you can bring barricades that were put back in the box during the setup and place those around the village. This symbol means that you take the top card from the intruder deck and discard it here to the graveyard. The fewer intruders you have in this deck, the better, so that's a good thing. And this symbol allows the players to choose a wound on one of the samurai and remove it. Now you can shuffle and randomly place back the surviving families into the village. This again reminds you of the importance of saving these families because once they are removed from the game, you will not receive their benefits at the end of each round. Now we resolve the intruder deck by revealing them one at a time. And if you see flames in this bottom corner, you remove a barricade from the village. You'll notice that some of the intruders don't have flames, so they'll have no effect. But based on this, we'd have to remove two more barricades. Any time in the game that you are required to remove a barricade and there's none left in the village, you remove a farm instead. Now, you might remember one of our samurai had caused one of these families to be removed, but once you've resolved the intruder deck, if you still have at least one farm and at least one family in the village, you have survived the round and can continue with a new one. To do this, collect all of the cards used during the first round into a single deck and reset your samurai meeples to the zero position. Now shuffle into the raider deck from the previous round a number of value 5 raiders that were set aside earlier equal to the number of players. These should be randomly chosen and you shouldn't look at which ones have been picked. Again, without looking, return the unchosen ones back to the box. Should you complete a second round going through the entire plunderer deck again following the same rules and there is still one farm and villager left, you play a new round, but this time you shuffle into the raider deck a number of randomly chosen value six raiders. Again, not looking at them and only taking a number equal to the number of players. The rest, you return to the box. If you survive the third round with at least one farmstead and family, the players win. Each new round is started with the player clockwise from the player who took their turn last in the previous round. So this is a time where it's not a bad idea to have that player with the active token so that you don't forget, wait a second, who was it who went last after you've done all the setup for the new round? 
But now let's take a moment and look at the different battle penalties that you might face from the raiders in your combat line. If you see this symbol, destroy a barricade, or if there's no barricades, destroy a farm. This means you move the top card of the raider deck to the intruder deck. This means you may not place raiders on the left side of your board this turn. Well, this means you cannot use the support action. However, you may still receive support from another player. These two symbols mean that either the player to your left or right must draw a raider card and add it to their combat line. Because this is a penalty, they're not allowed to use their talents at this point. However, if their Kiai is triggered, that is resolved as usual. After resolving these penalties, you can still choose to fight and draw another card from the raider deck that you will have to face yourself. Finally, this symbol means that you sustain a wound. If you already have a wound on your samurai and would sustain a second wound, instead of taking another token, remove the one that you have, but then flip your samurai board over. Your inner animal has been unleashed, your battle track is now extended, and your Kiai ability is improved. Put your samurai meeple back on the appropriate value based on the numbers in your combat line. If you would take a wound now, place it on your samurai board as normal, but if you would take a second wound while you're on the animal side, your samurai dies and the game is lost. Now, although wound tokens can be healed, once you've flipped to your animal side, you will stay there for the rest of the game. So healing this samurai right now wouldn't do anything. If a samurai is ever unable to apply a penalty, let's say they're showing the right arrow, but the player to their right has already passed, and that means they can't receive another card. In that case, the samurai takes a wound instead. Along with the normal play, which we just learned, there's also easy, hard, and heroic difficulty levels. For hard, you set up the village using a number of barricades equal to the number of players plus one. So compared to a normal game, you would have one less barricade. Also, each time a farm is destroyed, you first flip it over, apply the penalty, and then you remove it. For the heroic difficulty level, you set up the village with barricades just equal to the number of players. You apply farm penalties, and you don't get bonuses from family tokens between the rounds. The easy level is, well, it's easier, and I'll leave that for you to discover in the rulebook. For a two-player game, the rules are slightly modified. After choosing your two samurai, the support tokens from the unchosen samurai are placed beside the board. And now, at the start of each turn, before applying battle penalties, a player may choose to take and use any number of these abilities during their turn. However, they can each only be used once, so at the end of your turn, discard the used support tokens. Of course, players continue to have access to their own support tokens. For a solo game, just follow the two-player rules and control both of the samurai yourself. And that's how you play Samurai Spirit. Now, if you have any questions at all, don't hesitate to put them in the comments below. And I hope you'll stick around because we didn't go over all the Kiai powers and the various support token abilities. Those are found at the very back of the rulebook and they're quite easy to follow, but we're going to be doing a full playthrough of this game as well. And we'd like you to join us, so consider subscribing to the channel. Maybe you'll see some of those symbols explained there. But until the next episode, thanks for watching.